What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Zamboni. I am an herbalist and astrologer, and it is time to talk about the astrology of the week ahead. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for hitting that uh, save button on the right side. Thank you for sending this to a friend. Thank you for sending me a tip via Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. The, all of those things are super, super helpful to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us talk about the astrology of the week ahead. So we have a couple of really important events this week. First is the new moon in Virgo. New moon in Virgo is, so Virgo in the first place, um, is an earth sign. And so it's very concerned with practicality. Virgo is a sign which is associated with details. It's ruled by Mercury. And so there's something organizational that wants to show up here with, uh, with the new moon in Virgo. I've been thinking a lot about sort of trying to get one's affairs in order or trying to get your P's and Q's together. Um, especially since as we move into the part of the later, uh, the later part of the month, then um, things get a little bit dicey. And so now's a really good time to sort of uh, work with that or work with trying to like get everything together, get a system in order so as to properly engage the more difficult bit. And as we think about this systems dynamic, then um, really what shows up strongly here for me is the, the idea of cooperation, a group dynamic togetherness. We've got this new moon in Virgo, which is making a trine to Uranus and Taurus. It's a pretty exact trine to Uranus and Taurus. Mars is also present here in Virgo. Mars is making a trine to uh, Pluto and Capricorn. So we've got this uh, grand trine going on here in, in the Earth sign. So um, this is definitely a super cooperative dynamic. At the same time, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is in Libra together with Venus. These two planets are making trine aspects to Saturn and Jupiter respectively. So again, everyone is talking to each other, right? There's this sort of like cross-pollination dynamic that's really important. And so as we're sort of working with engineering systems so that each of us is a little bit stronger, so that each of us sort of has um, what it takes to do the things that we need to do, whatever that might be, that might be from a business angle, that might be on an emotional tip, that might be, uh, you know, a cleaning house. I Virgo does great with cleaning house and like just getting rid of clutter and that sort of stuff. Um, this is a really good time to uh, handle all of that sort of stuff, especially earlier in the week as the moon moves through Virgo and then moves into Libra, then uh, with the moon in Libra with Mercury and then later with Venus. This is a, this is a cute looking moon, especially, <clears throat> you know, so last week we had the uh, waning moon, right? And so the waning moon has a lot to do with closing things down, doing less, becoming, uh, you know, finishing things up, tying the little bow on it, what, you know, uh, terminating projects in some kind of way. As we move into the waxing phase of the cycle, now we're talking about newness. We're talking about bringing new things into fruition. We're talking about creation and beginnings in some kind of way. And so I think of this a lot as being engaged with systems dynamics, trying to work with a new system, especially in some kind of way that is innovative or inventive because we've got that trying to Uranus, right? Uranus has been super disruptive for a few years now, since 2018, uh, when Uranus moved into Taurus. And, and then there's been this whole like Saturn dynamic, which has put a lot of pressure on that. Um, and so I've been talking about that around the idea of necessity as the mother of invention, right? And so there, we've seen a year or more of necessity, right? And so now what are we inventing, especially on a personal level, so as to uh, generate the whole? And that's one of the things that really uh, feels really pertinent to me is the this kind of like uh, personal dynamic because each of us is a node in a larger network which sort of constitutes the whole world, right? And so as we engage this new uh, dynamic, the, the sort of new world that we are, that we move toward inhabiting, then how can uh, my personal uh, like engagement with that go on to build something which I want to live in later, right? And this especially feels um, pertinent to uh, the uh, on the like personal, personally emotional level, especially later in the week as Venus moves from Libra. Venus is in Venus in Libra is a position of domicile. This is a position where Venus is comfortable doing Venus things. Um, we can think about Venus as being associated with beauty or harmony or agreement, togetherness, 
um, you know, arts, the creativity, all this sort of stuff. Um, and so the Venus and Libra is kind of like a, a classically beautiful kind of situation, right? The things that everybody can agree is beautiful, like the looking out off the mountainside and seeing the, the forest and being like, oh, this is beautiful. Everyone in the world knows that this is beautiful, right? This is the kind of Venus and Libra situation. As Venus moves into Scorpio, Scorpio is a sign that is ruled by Mars. Mars and Venus are opposite in many ways. And so what we see is Venus moving into a position where uh, things look a lot less Venusian and look a lot more martial. Things look a lot more um, sort of like uh, conflict oriented or difficult or dirty in, in some kind of way. And so for Venus to move into this area shows that the personal feeling, the emotional component, which is uh, what Venus likes to refer to, sort of gets into this space where things get a little dark and weird and murky. And it's like, all right, what I, I like to think about Venus and Scorpio as um, liking things that are maybe distasteful. <clears throat> you know, some people might think that uh, the thing is gross or macabre or something like this, but Venus and Scorpio is like, oh, but it's also kind of delicious like i kind of love it you know um things that <clears throat> excuse me i've been really thinking about you know kind of what happens when we want things that are weird or want things that are gross or want things that are harmful what happens when we want things that we don't want right there's this sort of like conflicting nature of desire and desire is super uh, weird and dodgy terrain in the first place. It's a it's a uh, sort of like mindscape that a lot of people don't necessarily uh, engage with super deeply, and so there this kind of allows desire to be hijacked in some kind of way. But um, one of the things that's really important about Scorpio is that Scorpio prizes honesty above all else, and so the 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 truth telling component here. Uh, gets to be really powerful, especially as the, the Venus, so Venus is one of the personal planets, right? There's something really like deeply emotional, heartfelt about the way that Venus operates. And to get into Scorpio looks a little bit like uh, maybe I want some things that I am ashamed of wanting or that other people think that I shouldn't want or that I don't want to tell anybody about, but that I secretly love. And um, so engaging with that in some kind of way shows up here. Venus moving into Scorpio at the same time puts Venus into an opposition with Uranus and to a square with Saturn. And so this larger dynamic, which has been taking up the whole year, right, um, from back in uh, December of last year and even uh, like March before that when Saturn first moved into Aquarius, then we had uh, you know, we, we can sort of see this new world that wants to be created, right? Uh, particularly in the rubble, through the rubble of the old world. The old world sort of wants to break up and, uh, you know, like the, the old way of moving through the world doesn't work anymore. And so there's this new world that's being created. Data is the new coal and all this sort of stuff, right? You can look back. Uh, I was talking deeply about that in December, December of last year. It's all here on Instagram. Um, um, and a bunch of it is on Patreon too. They're, they're previews here on Instagram. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so as we, you know, as we, as Venus moves into Scorpio, then we see how this larger sort of global dynamic becomes very personal. It becomes about me and how I engage in this and how I feel about this. And because each of us is a node in this wider network, then how we personally engage that sort of becomes the foundation upon which the next 200 years is founded <clears throat> as we engage the air triplicity um, and Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions in air signs, right? So looking into this and the, the feeling of it is uh, really important and I think that a good way to engage that is going to be through the systems dynamic that we can generate under the new moon in Virgo, right? The new moon in Virgo, um, it doubles down on cooperative, uh, on, on cooperation, right? We've got all these trines, we've got all the, all the planets sort of talking to each other. And then as, and so this 
offers us an opportunity to get a network and community together, get some people around who uh, we can maybe talk to or share information with, learn from, these kinds of things. Um, and uh, and even, you know, there, we can see some opposing viewpoints showing up here and all this sort of stuff, right? We've got um, the, the Mars and the Pluto, which are kind of dark and murky. And then we've got the Uranus and Taurus, which wants to bring in something new. And then Venus is also involved, and Mercury's involved, and Saturn and Jupiter, like everyone is here, right? And so uh, engaging that sort of system and working with cooperation, working with then sort of gives us the opportunity or a system by which we might understand ourselves and our personal emotional landscape so as to generate the world which we desire. So thank you so much for being here. I super appreciate you. Please send me a tip via Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. I super, super appreciate it. Um, check me out on Patreon. On There you can find an electional report where I talk about uh, how to do, how, how to time uh, events in your life so as to get the, the best benefit out of all the things. Thank you so much for being here. I super appreciate you. Just send it to a friend or something like that. Even that, liking, subscribing, all these kinds of things is super helpful to me. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing y'all next time. Bye.